Also, since mana, mana. Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. Today I'm back with another What I Eat In A Day YouTube review. And today I'm gonna to be talking about High Carb Hannah. High Carb Hannah was in high demand in the comment section on my video, so here we are. So Hannah talks a lot about in her videos um, having gone through a really kind of extreme diet overhaul. She lost 70 pounds after starting a low oil, uh, plant-based whole food diet. She also has a lot of cool videos about living in in a tiny house uh, off the grid. And she talks a lot about having a healthy relationship with food. However, at the same time, that's juxtaposed against having a lot of videos on weight loss hacks and celery juice cleanses and potato detoxes and intermittent fasting and detoxes in general. So you probably can guess what I have to say about that. But without ado, I'm going to get into her what I eat in a day video. Let's do this. Let's start with breakfast. I didn't decide between oats or a smoothie so I combined them. <sighs> so good. I basically just blended some bananas, berries, and protein powder with a little bit of water. And then I cooked some instant oats in a separate bowl and just left them in there to cool for a tiny bit and thicken. I poured the smoothie on half of it and the oats on the other half and then I topped it with some fresh berries and peanut butter, a little bit of Enjoy Life chocolate chips and some coconut. And let me tell you guys, this was the most amazing combo ever. I feel like because it was hot and cold and more savory but more sweet and had all these like toppings on it. I love it. I love her like zen moment around this breakfast. But honestly, this looks like really good. I love the idea of combining a smoothie with your oatmeal. Um, I like foods that you can like eat with a spoon more than just kind of like chug back like a smoothie. I just find it's more emotionally and like satisfying. So I think this is actually a great option. So we've got lots of good things going on. We've got the energizing carbs and antioxidants from all the berries. And of course, also from the oats, we've got some fiber in there. We've got protein from the protein powder and the, and the nut butter. We've got healthy fats from the nut butter and the coconut. But it looks awesome. But just in a really healthy way. So good. And then I took my vitamins. I typically like to wait until I eat something to take them just because I feel like they digest better. But I know it's like not necessary. It's just I like to have something in my stomach when I take my vitamins. If you guys saw my video. So there is some truth to this. Some vitamins and minerals may kind of be easier on the stomach when taken with food or when after food has been in the stomach. Uh, so things like iron would be a really good example of that. Other vitamins might be absorbed a little bit better depending on what food you eat. So things like vitamins A, D, E, and K are your fat soluble vitamins. And then your water soluble vitamins are a little bit more easygoing. So things like B vitamins, C, folate, etc. So you can take those whenever you want. So on supplements, I was taking the Ritual Essential Women's Supplement and I just switched to their prenatal because obviously Derek and I are still trying to have a baby and we're trying really hard, not pregnant yet, but I figured I might as well take a prenatal and I didn't even know that they made a prenatal so I started taking this about a month ago. I really like the fact that it doesn't make me feel nauseous. I have taken prenatals in the past because I used to think that they would like make my hair and my nails stronger, but they always made me really nauseous. So this one definitely has no nausea effect to it and I'm in love with them. Obviously when we're trying to have a baby or even pregnant, getting the right amount of nutrients and vitamins is essential to the development of the baby, but also ourselves. And I didn't actually know this, but the ideal time to start taking a prenatal is about three months before you wanna get pregnant. So I'm glad that um, Hannah mentions this because I have a very unflattering shot. I'm sorry, Hannah, honey. But um, I'm glad that she mentions this because it is really important that if you are trying to conceive a baby um, or even if you are sexually active and of childbearing age, um, you know, it's important to take a prenatal vitamin because 
mistakes can happen, right? I mentioned this in a previous video, but it is really important to prevent neural defects and of course for the development of the baby. And I just took a quick look at the ritual vitamins that she's mentioning um, and they look like a good option for vegans because they have a vegan source of iron and vitamin D3, which is not always the case for all uh, prenatal supplements. So one thing I do want to flag is that Hannah mentions that she's trying really hard to get pregnant uh, with her partner. However, the title of this video is what to eat, what I eat in a day to stay lean and healthy, which I think is a bit counterproductive. Fertility requires body fat. So if you're trying to conceive and you haven't had success, I highly suggest seeking out some help from your doctor, finding out, you know, through blood work, what are your cortisol levels, your LH, your estrogen, because low body fat can interfere with these hormones and make it difficult to have regular ovulation or maintain a healthy pregnancy. I am going to be making a whole video about fertility in the future because as a fellow infertility warrior, I know a lot. If you're not considering pregnancy, I highly also recommend Ritual's Essential Women's Daily Vitamin that I was taking for a few months before I started taking this. I will link the video where I talked about that down below and how it helped me to fix a iron deficiency that I have. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm glad she mentioned kind of iron deficiency and, and taking supplements. However, I want to flag that before you go into taking any kind of supplements, always speak to your healthcare provider. If you're self-diagnosing yourself as being uh, iron deficient because of some of the common symptoms of anemia, like being tired, weak, chest pains, pale, etc., just know that it's not actually always iron that is the issue. It could also be kidney issues, um, pregnancy, it could be um, potentially like ulcers, it could be medications, cancer, or even a B12 deficiency. So always get your numbers checked if you're unsure. All right, let's get into lunch. So I'm having this Thai salad. It's made with um, like this really good ginger carrot tahini dressing that is out of this world. I mean, do I say everything's out of this world? But like this dressing is my one of my favorites and I like to make it in big batches and it's really good on kelp noodles or um, pasta noodles. I also put it on just tofu and steamed veggies is really good. So what I have in here is some spring greens, tofu, this is a lemon mm. cat hair, a lemon garlic tofu that I made. Um, some edamame, cucumber, sesame seeds, cilantro, and red onion. Look at this. So that salad looks amazing. We've got lots of protein from the edamame and the tofu, tons of greens in there, which look amazing. Love the vegetables. Um, I mean, I don't know if there's fat in that dressing because I know she's kind of into the low oil thing. So I don't know what's in that dressing, but if not, we could use definitely some fat here. And because her name is High Carb Hannah, I was definitely anticipating some more carbs here. Where are the carbs at, Hannah? Um, but I mean, hey, if you're gonna make up for a dinner, that's totally fine. She has more carbs at breakfast so as long as things are kind of like balanced throughout the day i'm happy it looks really good all right moving on to snack time i'm still editing so i'm just gonna have a snack of some blueberries and this banana i feel like editing isn't a lot of physical work but it's so mentally draining that i just need fuel to keep me going so this is the perfect little midday snack for me so there they are there are the energizing carbs and that totally makes sense we had less carbs at the lunch more carbs for the snack i get it now let's look at dinner dinner time i really want to make pasta because i feel like i haven't really had a lot of substance today like i had fruit and then i had a smoothie with the oats and salad I just need like a lot of carbs and protein. So I love that she kind of has the intuition to say, you know, I have eaten pretty light today. Maybe I was busy or like, I just didn't think to like put things together that were like super satisfying. And I've arrived at dinner and I'm really hungry and I need something really satisfying and hearty. And that's great. I mean, like, of course, in a perfect world, you'd say, spread those calories out throughout the day. 
But being an intuitive eater means not fussing over each and every meal or snack and trying to make it perfect. Our body is so intuitive that if we don't eat a whole lot at one meal, we're gonna make up for it shortly after. And sometimes that means like the next day or the next meal or the next snack. Um, oftentimes, you know, if we have like a light day of eating, the next day we'll make up for it by eating more. Or if we eat a lot one day, cause maybe it's a holiday or we go out for dinner or we just, or have a bigger appetite that day. Sometimes the next day we might eat less. So as long as we're focusing on trying to get a balanced um, diet over the course of let's say a week, we're in really good shape. Lentils, it's super high in protein, so I like to use it and the taste and texture is pretty good. And then I had some canned artichokes, some sun-dried tomatoes and frozen spinach in my fridge. So I threw that in there with some of the Bio Life Parmesan cheese. I didn't add any dressing to this, I basically just put half a lemon, some garlic powder, and Italian seasoning in there and mixed it all together and then just threw this into a bowl. Then I just added some fresh chopped tomatoes in there, stirred all of it together, and that was it. It was pretty easy using everything that I had on hand. So that looks amazing and now I'm super craving pasta. Um, but I just wanna say that like, I think it's funny cause she started off the meal like prep saying how she really wanted to get in lots of protein, like a higher protein dinner as well as carbs of course. Um, and yes, she's using like a lentil pasta which is higher in protein, but I'd still consider this more of like a moderate protein meal. And if she really wanted to kind of beef it up and take it to the next level, she could throw in some tofu or some white beans, or even just like a healthy sprinkling of nutritional yeast would really help things out. I get that her name is High Carb Hannah, so maybe her standards for like high protein are slightly different than mine. Um, but if that was what she was looking for and I was her dietitian, I would say, hey, you could make some of these adjustments to boost the protein a little bit more. The easiest way to lose weight. I did totally quit intermittent fasting. It had over time really negative effects on me, not like physically, but very emotionally and in other ways. So I really like that Hannah touched on the fact that she was quitting intermittent fasting because it just wasn't good for her emotional health. Um, Hannah has talked a lot about how she's really tried to become more in tune with her body and her eating. And like, I have super props for the woman for saying that, you know, hey, this, this diet that is really popular right now and really in, you know, just was not working for me. I will also say that there is evidence that intermittent fasting in some people can cause decreased energy, lack of concentration, fatigue, uh, irritability, etc. So I'm really not surprised that Hannah kind of was struggling emotionally with the concept. Also, since Hannah mentioned that she's really trying to conceive, I would agree that intermittent fasting is not super supportive of improving fertility. In fact, research suggests that women during Ramadan who are fasting increase their cortisol levels, which interferes with gonadotropin releasing hormone, which can interfere with ovulation and therefore make it more difficult to get pregnant. While we don't have a whole lot of human research that is specifically on intermittent fasting and fertility, I did find one rat study that was particularly concerning. The study found that after 12 weeks, the female fasting rats LH, which is a reproductive hormone, plummeted, their estradiol skyrocketed, their leptin, which is the satiety hormone, was six times lower than normal, and their ovaries shrank. What the f I know that I often emphasize that we cannot extrapolate human outcomes from rat outcomes. However, as someone who struggled with infertility and legitimately would try anything to make my journey easier, as well as just somebody who knows that dieting in general is not healthy and does not work, I wouldn't risk it. Okay, folks, let's take a look at Hannah's macronutrient distribution. In this day, Hannah's getting about 1,552 calories, 28% is coming from fat, 56% from carbs, and 16% from protein. So this is all technically within the normal average ranges when it comes to the macronutrient distribution. However, for an active young woman who's trying to conceive, I would say it is on the low side for the calories. Okay, so let's start by talking about what I like about Hannah's diet. First of all, she includes a wide variety of healthy foods. Even though Hannah is plant-based, she does try to incorporate a nice variety of foods that have lots of good fats and antioxidants and fiber and protein. Um, if I was being nitpickety, I could say, 
hey, maybe throw in an extra snack or two, especially because the calories are so low. She definitely has room to sneak one or two more snacks in there. Um, ideally something with some fiber, protein, or healthy fats in there to kind of keep her satisfied. So for example, she could have some chia pudding in between you know, breakfast and lunch, or maybe she could do some like hummus with vegetables. Um, just something to kind of boost up that protein that I know she mentioned wanting to kind of get a little bit more of. While her diet definitely does seem highly nutritious, I know Hannah mentioned that she is trying to conceive. So just making sure that she is kind of getting enough calories and maintaining a high enough body fat to do so would really be my recommendation. I don't know anything about really her fertility journey. I don't know what her diagnosis is, but if it is something like HA or hypothalamic amenorrhea, which I talked about earlier in my Stephanie Buttermore video, um, then that would definitely be my recommendation is to really focus on getting those calories up. Number two, her recipes are accessible and easy. I really love watching uh, YouTubers What I Eat In A Day, where I walk away having not really seen like step by step a whole recipe start to finish, but yet I feel so inspired to do something like that at home, um, and I feel like I can. So that's how I feel after watching some of Hannah's videos, like that smoothie oatmeal concoction, awesome. Uh, that salad, I am totally stealing that because now I'm craving like a ginger dressing. So I just really love that none of those recipes included or required any expensive supplements or really hard to find ingredients. They were all things that I think pretty much anyone could really pull off. And number three, she's talking about taking her prenatal supplements. So you know I always applaud these YouTubers when they discuss their supplement regime, and especially in the context of kind of trying to conceive, I definitely think it is an important piece here. Some of the really important nutrients during pregnancy or while trying to conceive, of course, are iron and folate, both of which she's getting in her diet and also in the prenatal. She didn't mention vitamin D or omega-3, um, both of which are also very important when trying to conceive in pregnant in pregnancy, um, but I will touch more on that just momentarily. Now I want to talk about what I don't like in Hannah's video. So first of all, I would say her calories are just too low. You know, the average woman needs about 2000 calories and that is an average. Um, and I don't really know her like activity level. I don't know her weight or height or really like any anthropometrics like that. So it's very hard for me to make a very specific recommendation here. I'm not her dietitian. However, I would say that, you know, for an active woman, and I've seen in some of her other videos that she lifts pretty heavy and she works out, this probably just isn't enough calories, especially for fertility's sake. Again, she mentions trying to conceive and trying really hard, and I don't know her diagnosis, but if there is some hypothalamic amenorrhea, um, one thing I talked about in my HA video and my all-in video is that the recommendation can be, you know, starting as, you know, as a minimum at 2,500 calories, and there is no maximum for how many calories in order to restore your cycle. I don't know if she's ovulating or menstruating. I don't know what her diagnosis is. However, for those of you guys who are watching at home, and trying to conceive, definitely look at your caloric levels and make sure you're eating enough. Number two, I wanna talk about some of the misguidance around fertility and body fat. So Hannah talks in this video about how she's no longer focusing so much on numbers or weight loss, yet she still titles the video, What I Eat In A Day To Stay Lean. Um, she also has a lot of videos that are kind of like weight loss guides or weight loss cheat sheets or the easiest way to lose weight, etc. Um, and I know in another video she talks about like how, how she gained weight and she kind of feels good, but then also talks about how she's still kind of measuring body fat and things like that, which is still considered body manipulation and not body kindness. A lot of experts believe that for fertility, the optimal BMI range is between 22 to 24, which is actually at the upper end, not the lower end, of what is considered a normal BMI. For a woman who is 5'6", for example, that would be somewhere between 140 and 145 pounds. So I know that BMI is grossly flawed, but what I want people to take away is that we actually want to not fear body fat when it comes to trying to get pregnant. We need that body fat when it comes to trying to grow, feed, and nourish another human being. Number three, there's a lack of omega-3s and vitamin D in her diet. 
Now, when it comes to analyzing Hannah's overall omega-3 intake, she's getting about 750 milligrams of total omega-3s, which is just below the recommendation of about 1,100. So I'm less worried about total omega-3s, but what I'm not seeing a whole lot of is the EPA and DHA omega-3s that are really important during pregnancy. So for most women who are not plant-based, these would come from kind of marine sources, like things like uh, salmon or trout, herring, mackerel, or an omega-3 supplement that has at least 300 milligrams of DHA. For my plant-based moms, you'd be looking at an algae-based omega-3 supplement that has DHA. As for vitamin D, there just isn't a whole lot of great sources in the diet, especially a plant-based diet, so including a supplement in your regime might be a really good idea. Research suggests that including a vitamin D supplement can improve your chances of conceiving. It also has a lot of benefits during pregnancy, including reducing the chances of preeclampsia and postpartum bleeding. So I would definitely recommend to Hannah and anybody at home to speak to your doctor about a vitamin D supplement, especially if you're not getting a lot in the diet or you're trying to conceive. And finally, there is a lot of problematic nutrition information on the channel. So I found this video in particular pretty benign when it comes to misguided nutrition information. However, there were other videos on her channel, like a lot of them about celery juice curing all sorts of stuff like acne and strep throat. Um, no. Sure, celery is packed with fiber, vitamin C, vitamin K, potassium, etc. But the research that we have on celery juice being a cure-all is limited. We know that the flavonoids and phenolic compounds that are found in foods like celery may play a role at reducing the risk of cardiovascular disease, cancer, diabetes, etc. but we really cannot make any conclusive claims. A lot of these studies have been done on rats and they're super small, so really difficult to make any recommendations from them. Not to mention, a lot of these same phenolic compounds and flavonoids are found in lots of other fruits and vegetables. I mean, I don't know who the celery lobbyists are out there, but they've done a good job. Not to mention, a lot of the beneficial compounds, aka fibers, found in celery are removed when you juice it. So I say if you like the taste of celery, and I do sometimes, I mean especially with like peanut butter on it, um, just eat the food and skip the $10 juice from the juice bar. Just saying. In conclusion, I think that Hannah's diet is pretty well balanced, um, especially as far as plant-based diets go. Um, I also think she's got lots of great ideas that are accessible and easy and definitely inspiring. Um, she's also on the right track when it comes to motherhood. She's taking her prenatal vitamins. She's stopping the intermittent fasting. However, I do think there are a few things that she could do to really up her chances of conceiving. Mainly, I think it's making sure that she's getting enough calories and fat and some of those really important nutrients nutrients in her day to maintain a healthy pregnancy. So I would encourage Hannah to continue with intuitive eating and improving her relationship with food. I know Hannah talks about listening to her body and intuitive eating. However, her channel is still peppered with a lot of diet culture and a lot of information that is not backed up by science. I do think that for a lot of YouTubers, what they say and do with regards to their relationship with food is sometimes at odds. And I think it would be helpful for Hannah to do like a deep dive and try to evaluate some of those deep seated beliefs that she may have around food and her body and fat, etc. cetera. Um, and I think that would really, really support her fertility journey. Honestly, I wish her all the best luck and lots of baby dust. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below if you have any questions about fertility. I will definitely be covering it in an upcoming video or any YouTubers you want me to review. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.